Everybody's back in the room. Uh, I just want to inform you that I will be speaking in French. So uh, if you don't understand French, please go get those, I don't know the name of it, eh, headphones, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Good morning. Welcome to this 11th conference, scientific conference on neuromuscular diseases. We're happy to see you numerous here at this uh, uh, symposium uh, that was a Canadian and bilingual before. It is a unique opportunity for health professionals, researchers, clinicians to share, to learn more uh, about uh, neuromuscular diseases, so it's a great honor for me to be part of it. I'll try to speak uh, slowly. It's okay. The theme today is uh, scientific advances to application from bench to bedside. When we started to organize uh, the uh, symposium with the committee, this uh, theme came up very rapidly on the table. Things are going so fast uh, these times with uh, new treatments, new medications. So we wanted to couple those two solitudes, the labs, research, and uh, implementation, application, clinical uh, aspect. Besides uh, all this, uh, at uh, dystrophy, mu muscular dystrophy, Canada, we have no knowledge translation in our priorities, and I should have asked the tra interpreters before. It's about uh, passing on knowledge. We want to make available for our clients, for health professionals, all the information we uh, can collect on research and science in a language they will un understand. This met that priority of a muscular dystrophy. We will explore this in the two-day presentations. Everybody says it's so hard to choose uh, our uh, presentations. Everything seems so interesting, and yes, I agree. Looks very interesting, and please relax. Just take it one conference at a time because everything is uh, taped. It will be available on our website. Uh, the uh, presenter presenters will be uh, recorded. I will take the opportunity to thank the organizers, um, organizing committee uh, members or partners of health. Uh, system, health professionals, uh, experts in neuromuscular diseases. I will not name them all. You'll see their name in the program. I'll name only one because I forgot this name on the program. It's Sarah Turzon Dizile. Sorry, Sarah. <clears throat> My uh, great organizing committee, when I say great, they are truly great people. They uh, uh, designed the program from scratch. They got the speakers. They promoted the event. Uh, they got participants. And they were part of uh, programming when with this type of uh, conference title, it's difficult to uh, condense everything in a two-day conference. They are here for presentations and also to moderate different conferences and um, uh, solve our, all the uh, emergencies that we'll have in the next two days. Thank you also to these uh, people. This is the very first time I have the responsibility of organizing this uh, uh, symposium. I helped Pascal in the back. They were so patient. Most of them were women. They supported me. They uh, shared their advices, experience, and positive energy. Thank you. I would like to thank our sponsors, uh, Sanofi Janssen, a gold partner, and uh, Biogen PTC, PTC and, Bio and uh, Kyogo, silver sponsors. Without your support, uh, this event would not have been possible. Thank you. I want to 
thank people with the disease and uh, their families for the information. This uh, type of symposium is for health professionals, clinicians, and we opened up to the people with their with the disease and families. Thank you, and hope that you will enjoy the experience. I uh, would like uh, to thank the uh, people of uh, the mission, uh, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, who came from uh, other provinces. Uh, first days here were beautiful. They could uh, walk around, discover the city. And sorry, dear, uh, co uh, dear colleagues, I was not very present during the last weeks or months, but you were very uh, understanding. And I'll be back next week. <clears throat> I would like to recognize Stacy Lintern. She's a COO at uh, Muscular Dystrophy Canada. She uh, did everything to provide me the tools, times, trust, encouragement. And she did also part of my work. I didn't have time to cover everything. So thank you so much, uh, Stacy. She will say a few words. And then we will have our opening uh, conference. Just before the first conference, I'll be here and say a few words about the logistics. Have a good symposium. Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to the 11th edition of the Research Symposium from bench to bench side, scientific, adv scientific, scientific advances to application. Muscular Dystrophy Canada and valued partners have worked diligently in planning and preparing for this, for this symposium over the last several months. As you may know, in the last couple of years, Muscular Dystrophy Canada, as a result of our 2017-2020 strategic plan, pushing beyond possible, has, has and is still going through some major changes. We're changing for the better, though. Our mandate is clear from our board, more money for mission. In the last year, we've been able to make investments in enhancing our programs and services, resulting in reaching more people and having a greater impact. In addition, we are and have continued commitment to invest more into research. This edition of the symposium, for the first time, has been extended to healthcare professionals nationwide, bilingual, and all sessions are being recorded to be fully accessible for our partners and clients on our website. We continue to work, and this year our plan for the research portfolio is very exciting. Our plan includes additional investments with a focus on knowledge translation and enhanced funding for research activities nationwide. A key priority for Muscular Dystrophy Canada is moving our, pre our research portfolio forward and working in partnership with the research community, clinicians, clients, and corporate and industry. This year's symposium, we are extremely greatly grateful for our partners. Without their support, the symposium would just not have been possible. We would like to thank the speakers who have many competing priorities, as we know, but have taken the time to assist in moving research outcomes to be applied and have a direct impact for our patients and our clients. We would like to thank the planning committee who helped guide our efforts ensuring the symposium content was relevant and meaningful. We would like to thank our donors and sponsors. Without your support, we cannot move forward with our mission. You enable us to make a difference for this we are extremely thankful. Lastly, thank you for all of you here today. Thank you for ensuring our clients have the best quality of care. Thank you for working in partnership with us. And together we can continue to make a difference for people affected by ne neuromuscular disorders. Thank you very much. I have the uh, sincere pleasure of welcoming our next speaker, uh, one of our valued sponsors for the symposium uh, from Santa Fe Genzyme. And uh, I'd like to welcome Michael Gottlieb, uh, who is the Rare Disease Franchise Head of Canada. Thank you. Okay, so this will be in English. I hope that's okay for most. Good morning. Uh, my name is Michael Gottlieb, and I have a little bit of a different background than most around here. I'm a chartered accountant, and some people say that makes me a little bit funny. If you didn't laugh, then there aren't any other accountants in the room. Uh, I also have an undergraduate genetics degree, which makes me even more different. I've worked in research labs for some fantastic scientists. I've worked in Canadian public health care, and one of my more interesting jobs was spending a $100 million CIHR grant to outsource 25,000 uh, clinical mouse cages from four hospitals in Toronto. 
So I think this gives me a unique appreciation of the research process. I've also served on the boards of two tra uh, charities as the board treasurer for Parkinson Society Canada and the board chair for Spinal Cord Injury Ontario. I have a unique appreciation for uh, your organization, Stacey, and I really do appreciate everything that Muscular Dystrophy Canada is doing for the community. Today, I'm the franchise head for the rare disease business in Canada at Sanofi Genzyme, and it's truly our pleasure to sponsor this conference today. Most of you today probably know that we have the treatment for Pompe disease, but I'm not here to speak about that. I really like working for Sanofi Genzyme because at the core, one of our key values is that when we do the right thing for patients, everything else will follow. And I know that's one of the key principles of Muscular Dystrophy Canada too. But let's be honest, pharma really does not have the best reputation in the market. My job, though, is to try and help as many patients as possible get a diagnosis and be in a position to help them with the right drug at the right time in their disease pathway. As an example, many of you are probably familiar with the University of Sherbrooke Next Generation Sequencing Panel. No? Anybody? One? Maybe one? Okay. Um, so this has been a really interesting success story with, with Sanofi Genzyme. It started with a research project with Dr. Sebastian Levesque out of the University of Sherbrooke, and he's a metabolic geneticist. We knew that muscular dystrophy gene panels were scattered, they were difficult to access and not well organized, so we needed a patient-focused solution. There are far too many patients sitting in doctor's offices without a diagnosis, and that's not acceptable in 2018. Just because we don't have treatments for most of the dystrophies, it doesn't mean that patients should be kept in the dark. So in speaking with Muscular Dystrophy Canada, I know that we all agree patients should have answers and be in a position to benefit for those drugs when they become available. I heard yesterday's session on clinical trials was good for those who attended. I know uh, we had a colleague speak there, uh, and I thought, it, I hope we were well represented. If there's any questions, we can, we can cover those later. Um, even if we look at the CNDR registry in Canada, there's an enormous cohort of patients who are followed in it without a proper diagnosis. So Dr. Levesque came to us with a solution to aggregate almost 100 genes in one next generation sequencing panel, and we certainly wanted to support this Made in Canada solution. Sanofi Genzyme continues to fund this project because it's simply the right thing to do. Patients deserve answers, and we are seeing great diagnostic yields across the country. As the head of the rare disease business, I really find it fascinating. I have the chance to meet so many inspiring patients, learn about their stories, and help them along their journey. The conversation is rarely about drugs, but most often it's just really someone to talk to, about a medical appointment, insurance question, a clinical trial, and always about hope for the future. When I think about patients, I worry a lot about the ones who are suffering at home. Those who are suffering uh, and have defined their normal as something that's not normal for most of us. Muscular dystrophy is like any other rare disease. It's silently progressive, increasingly debilitating, and often fatal. And our community needs to get in front of the disease pathway to help patients earlier in their prognosis. We need to intervene earlier. As an example, in Pompe disease, and I mentioned this to some this morning at breakfast, we've identified fewer than 6% of the patients, and I'm sure our epidemiology is not wrong. In fact, newborn screening in the U.S. has muscular dystrophy at an incidence much higher than any of us expect. So the question and my challenge to the team here today is why are these patients not presenting early, and how can we help our medical community recognize the disease symptoms earlier in the pathway? because I'm sure the patients are not sitting in your office waiting to be diagnosed. One of the uh, most interesting pieces of my job are the patient conversations, and I'm sure you've heard lots of patient stories. Every patient has a different story, but sometimes the stories really hit home for us. And I'll tell one. So the story starts with a young child around four years old and a phone call back to that child's mom. The child's mother received the phone call from the school principal with a very simple message. In kindergarten, the child couldn't run. And of course, the mother was really, really nervous. What does this mean? And the, ch the child went back and forth to various doctor's appointments without an answer. He was certainly falling behind his classmates. He was always the last person around the track and, and couldn't even do a sit-up. I think uh, the pathway, if I recognize it correctly, it was from pediatrician to rheumatology probably neurology as well, but no doubt.